Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Uh, communities in my riding are expressing concern about human trafficking, a heinous crime, Speaker, that has been referred to as modern-day slavery. The townships of Calvin, Chisholm, and Bonfield have all recently passed a resolution regarding this concern. The leaders of these communities note that human trafficking is one of the fastest-growing crimes in Canada. Victims are predominantly female and have an average age of only 14. They also note Ontario is a major hub of human trafficking in Canada, and victims are lured, manipulated, and coerced from communities across the province. A member for Halliburton Kawartha Lakes Brock proposed bill Saving the Girl Next Door will act will allow for the enforcement of protection orders on behalf of victims against traffickers. The bill also allows victims to seek compensation and to include trafficking as a sexual offence under the age of 18. As a result, the townships of Calvin, Chisholm, Bonfield resolved to support Saving the Girl Next Door Act and the member's motion calling for a multi jurisdictional task force to combat human trafficking in Ontario. Speaker, human trafficking is a growing and significant issue that requires urgent action. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Oshawa. Hydro rates have reached crisis levels in our province. After more than a decade of mismanagement and disregard by this government, the people of Ontario have had enough. They have had enough of struggling to get by each month, and they have had enough of paying for your mistakes. Since the Liberal government came into power in 2003, hydro bills in Ontario have nearly quadrupled. While the Premier continues to ignore this problem, families in my community are being forced to choose whether they can afford to eat or afford their heat. This is a crisis that you can't ignore any longer. At the beginning of September, I asked constituents in my riding to send me their hydro bills to share with the Premier. The response has been overwhelming. I hold in my hand more than 100 bills from families, seniors and businesses across our community. There is even a bill from the City of Oshawa who paid $150,000 for one month of streetlights. These constituents felt strongly enough about this issue to take the time to drop their bills off or mail them to my office, and today I'm sharing them with you. I will ask that a page delivers these directly to the Premier's desk because I want to make sure that she understands the reality for hydro users in Ontario. Families in my community are tired of paying for Liberal mistakes on their hydro bills, and they're ready for action. It's time that your government addresses this crisis instead of leaving my constituents in the dark. And Premier, the people of Oshawa look forward to your response. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. This past Saturday, I was thrilled to join members of Barrie's Latin community in hosting a celebration of our province's second official Hispanic Heritage Month. Nina Do Doanide and her team at the Barrie Latin Resource Centre organized a series of performances representing Barrie's diverse Hispanics culture from Guatemala, Peru, Venezuela, Brazil, and Mexico. We enjoyed traditionally dressed dancers performing, performing the garimba, the marinara, and the salsa. A Barry singer, Gabriel Villa, entertained us with a rousing version of Amor Secreto, and a local band, Los Locos, was a great hit as the crowd joined in to dance. We also provided an assortment of traditional Mexican foods, including taquitos, churros, flans, guacamole and bean dip contributed by local restaurants, salsa shop and made in Mexico, and by other community members. I was also pleased to hear about one aspect of their history as Manuel Vera spoke about the Mayan civilization and its history. Mr. Speaker, it was an absolute pleasure to host this event in downtown Barrie, which celebrated one of the many peoples making up our province's rich cultural mosaic. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to recognize Heritage Caledon's 40th anniversary this year. Caledon Heritage was formed two years after Caledon, Albion, and the northern part of Chincuzi Townships amalgamated in 1974 to form the town of Caledon. 
The volunteer members of the Caledon Heritage Committee have spent the past four decades cataloging, conserving, and preserving our community's history. Through an extensive list of stories, buildings, and artifacts, they have helped record our community's origins, historical events, and people that lived and worked in Caledon. To celebrate this year's anniversary, Heritage Caledon has created a self-guided walking tour that highlights some of Caledon's storied past. Whether you visit Alton, Bellfountain, Bolton, Cataract, Cheltenham, Inglewood, Palgrave, or Terracotta, these walking tours serve as a reminder of what life was like for those who chose Caledon as their home. The research conducted by Heritage Caledon through its committee members, volunteers, and supporters over the past 40 years has helped to ensure our collective history is recorded and preserved. To the current committee members, thank you for your work. I also want to acknowledge the critical work that former members like Alec Rayburn and Heather Rod Broadbent did researching and recording Caledon's past. On behalf of the Ontario Legislature, it is my pleasure to congratulate the Town of Caledon's Heritage Committee, past and present, on 40 years of preservation and education. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Bramley Gore Bolton. Thank you. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered today on the traditional lands of the Mississaugas of New Credit. Every year since being elected, I've given a statement in memory of those who lost their lives to the November 1984 sick genocide. And this year, I want to give another statement, and I want to acknowledge this, this anniversary in two ways. One, I want to acknowledge the tremendous work of the blood donation campaign run by the Sick Nation. It's one of the largest blood drive campaigns in Canada, and it's attributed to saving the lives of over 113,000 people. It's held in memory of those who lost their lives to this genocide. In addition, I want to share a personal story. Uh, I personally experienced the trauma of knowing that members of my community were targeted and killed just for being a sick. And what makes that trauma even worse is that I stand across from a government that failed to recognize this genocide. What makes it worse is that this is a country that should acknowledge the harm suffered by any community. And that's why on this occasion, on this anniversary, I want to stand in solidarity and make a commitment to work towards the acknowledgement of all communities who seek to have their genocide recognized, whether it's the indigenous community, whether it's the Jewish community, the Tamil community, the black, the Palestinian, the Syrian, any community seeking genocide should have their genocide recognized. It's a step forward in terms of reconciliation. It's a step towards justice. It's one of the first steps of healing. I commit to all communities that it's my personal commitment to work towards that recognition. I hope other, other politicians and other parties will follow suit. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, Joe Roberts arrived in my home riding on October 6 after pushing a shopping cart almost 3,000 kilometres from Newfoundland. It was my absolute pleasure to welcome him to Kingston. Push for Change is a national campaign that began on May 1st to raise awareness for funds for youth homelessness in Canada. For 517 days, Joe Roberts will push his cart, an item used by many homeless people, to house the few possessions that they have across 10 10 provinces, a distance of about 9,000 kilometres. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Roberts was once a homeless youth himself. He has invested his time, his energy, and his heart in this campaign. Money raised will support the upstream project, which aims to end youth homelessness through working in schools. Mr. Roberts will be welcomed at 300 secondary schools and at 200 community events. In Kingston, Mr. Roberts spoke to an audience of over 1,000 students at a local secondary school. He also shared his story to a spellbound audience at a luncheon that I attended with frontline service providers. Youth homelessness is a problem across the province, and naturally, Kingston is not immune. Today, the team joins us at Queen's Park. We celebrate their incredible journey, and we thank Joe and Marie Roberts, Sean Richardson, and everyone who has supported the campaign along the way. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Roberts' tireless efforts inspires us all to work together to end youth homelessness, not only in our province, but across this great nation. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Go, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from chatham I uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I rise today to acknowledge the work of Joe Roberts, his wife Marie Roberts, the campaign director, and the Push for Change team. Joe Roberts is a celebrated Canadian entrepreneur, and he knows the issue of homelessness firsthand. In 1989, he was a youth living in Vancouver's downtown east side, pushing a shopping cart, struggling with substance abuse and homelessness. Thanks to the help and support of his mother 
And an OPP officer, Scott McLeod, who is now retired, he turned his life around. Joe attributes his success to being lucky enough to having been Canadian and is now on a mission to pay it forward to help other young Canadians avoid homelessness. Beginning on May 1st this year, uh, Joe began pushing a shopping cart, a symbol of chronic homelessness across Canada, from St. John's, Newfoundland, to raise dollars and awareness about the growing issue of youth homelessness that impacts 35,000 young people each year. Today's speaker is day 179 of the 517-day 9,000 walk, and Joe's reached Mississauga, and now right here at Queen's Park. He's already walked 3,399 kilometers, and he tells me that he will be in Vancouver on September 30th, 2017. That's only an additional 5,700 kilometers to go. The Push for Change supports all three pillars of youth, homelessness, prevention, emergency service, and first-hand initiatives. I might add, Speaker, he'll be in Chatham coming up the latter part of November. So let's give Joe Roberts and the Push for Change a warm welcome here at Queen's Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. our guests, but we have to, as the speaker, acknowledge that no one outside of the House uh, as visitors uh, can participate in, in any way, so I thank you. It's now member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I recently had the honour of participating in a ride-along with a member of Windsor Police Services. Senior Constable Armstrong is a member of Windsor's ESU team, which is a highly specialized unit utilized during high-risk situations. Constable Armstrong took the time to show me around headquarters, introduced me to many of Windsor's dedicated officers, provided me with the opportunity to meet with the frontline team that answers 911 calls and dispatch officers to locations where they are needed, and gave me a tour of the holding cells. I had the pleasure of meeting the ESU team upon their return to headquarters after a call. Speaker, we were headed to the call and they deemed it too unsafe for me to be there, so we couldn't join them. They took the time to explain the scope of their work, show me the equipment they use, and explain how that equipment is used and in what situations. Constable Armstrong took me to the scene of a potential break-in, where I had the opportunity to speak with patrol officers about their role in law enforcement and some of the obstacles they face on the job. It became quite clear during my night shift ride-along that one of, if not the biggest issue that police officers face, is responding to calls for citizens with mental health issues. Speaker, more needs to be done to provide Ontarians with mental health needs, the community services required to support them, and police officers need to be recognized for the incredible work that they do in their role as not only law enforcement, but intervention, counselling and compassionate care providers. I want to take the opportunity to thank everyone in law enforcement, and I think it's fitting that we have law enforcement officers here in the House with us today. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank um, whether the 911 and dispatch operators, officers that service the holding cells at headquarters, patrol officers, specialized units, canine officers, as well as the chaplains and medical staff that give so much of themselves to keep us all safe. I have a very different and more informed view of my community, and I would like to thank all law enforcement for that opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is an honour for me to stand today to recognize Centennial College, located in the riding of Scarborough Gilwood, the member from the Minister of Education. This year is the 50th anniversary of Centennial College, Mr. Speaker. It is the first publicly funded college in Ontario, built established by then Honourable uh, Will William Davis and the Minister of Education. Today, there are 24 publicly funded colleges in Ontario, serving 200 communities in the province. When Centennial College was first opened, it had about 514 students. Today, there are over 18,000 full-time students and 20,000 
part-time students, Mr. Speaker. With more than 100 fields of study, these programs emphasize experiential learning with laboratory instruction, pay cooperative education opportunity, and industry and agency field placements. Mr. Speaker, I want to personally thank Ann Bueller, the president of Centennial College, the Board of Governors Centennial, along with the faculty, staff, and students for 50 years of outstanding academic and uh, post-secondary education in Scarborough, but also beyond. And I look forward to the celebration this Friday to joining their celebration at Centennial College. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. Nice. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's